In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to highlight five different changes in the interface as of the middle of September 2023. So if you have the new version or the new subscriber version, or if you're looking at it, what are some of the changes you can anticipate? Let's look at them. First one I want to look at is these controls down here that move ahead by either a frame or back a frame by default. Now you can click on them, but I'd rather use the comma key for left and the period key for right. But if you want to change what these two buttons do, how do you do that? There are no controls right here. I found all you need to do is click anywhere in the preview screen. Then you'll have a pop-up menu, and we want to look at the Seek By. Now the default is frame. I can click on second. I can seek by one minute at a time. I can seek by scene, subtitle if I have those activated, chapters or segments. I tend to rotate between frame and second. Let me click on second. And now you see the icon change. So if I either click either one of these or if I press the period key, now it moves forward a second at a time. The comma key takes me a second back. So if you want to change these for the function of those two keys or just for clicking on the icons, that's how you do it in the new version of PowerDirector. Let me look at the second option. How do you do voice narration? If I'm in the media room, I can click on the record button. If I click on record, now I'm in my voice narration and I can make those changes. So that tool has moved from a menu to the simple button if you're in the media room, you'll see it. If you're in the other rooms, you will not. So you must be in the media room and then click on record. That takes you to your voice narration. Tip number three, how do you launch the paint designer? There are two ways to do that. The easiest way is to click on tools and click on paint designer. And that will open up your paint designer screen, which you can use to modify. And we have tutorials on what you can do with the paint designer. The other way you can get there is you can click on the overlays room and then click on the little box with the folded piece of paper and the plus in the lower right and then click on paint animation and that likewise will get you into your paint designer. So there are two doors into that particular tool. The next one we want to look at is what can you do if you want to work on the shape designer? Now, well, let me try tools and see if I have Shape Designer. No, I don't. So to do that, I have to be in the Overlays room, and I click again on my folded piece of paper with a plus in the lower right corner, and I click on Shape, and then that will open up my Shape Designer tool. Again, we have tutorials on working with the Shape Designer. In essence, it hasn't changed much, but we'll cancel out of that. One other tip I'd like to give you is how can you apply LUTs to an image or a video? To do that, uh, there are several simple steps. The first thing you need to do with LUTs to go to the Effects room and click on the Color LUT subcategory. And then you have other subcategories you can use to pick the LUT you want to use. I'll take this one. If you click on the LUT now, it will preview it on the screen, you'll see the difference in the coloring here, which is nice. I get to see what it looks like. If I want to apply the LUT, I simply take it and drag it and drop it on the track, and there I have it. If I want to remove that LUT, I click on the little eye icon, and it tells me I have the color LUT installed. I click there, and if I want to remove it, I can either disable it by unchecking it or press the minus to completely remove it and now it's gone from that particular video. So that's the way to get into your LUTs. Those are a few of the things that I've noticed recently that I wanted to pass along if you're working in CyberLink PowerDirector in the new interface.